here again with our series, All. Today, we're learning about how God wants every single person to be saved. Have you ever noticed how the world is full of sinful people? People have been making bad decisions and doing sinful things for hundreds and thousands of years. This world has a sin problem. For years, people have lied, cheated, stolen, shown hate towards others, and disobeyed God's commands. But that doesn't change the way God thinks about his people. God created all of us, and he still loves all of us, no matter what. God is extremely patient with us, even though we mess up all the time. That's why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He made a way for all people to be saved from their lives of sin. God wants all of his children to turn away from their lives of sin, repent, and be saved by his grace. You know what that means? You and I, as followers of Jesus, have a huge responsibility to let all people know that God wants them to be saved. You can pray for others. Give to missionaries and projects designed to reach people around the community and around the world. And you can even go to your family, your school, your neighborhood, and eventually all around the world to share the love of Jesus with all people. Today, you're going to learn more about that in your lesson. Until next time, this is Ashton. See ya! You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. Today, we're like basically talking about how like God wants every single person to be saved. So, Every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. God wants everyone to be saved. Oh my lanta, I love saving. Just last week, I saved so much money at the mall. I bought a $100 dress for only 15 after I used my rewards points, a coupon, and my super savings discount code. That's not the kind of saved I'm talking about. Oh, I'm talking about something even greater. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about being saved from sin. You know, like salvation. Oh, Jesus came to save like all people from sin. He wants everyone to be saved. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. God wants everyone to be saved. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. All right, boys and girls, it's time for today's Bible story. I want you to sit super still and listen super close because I want you to hear this. Today, we're gonna learn all about a man named Nicodemus. Can y'all say Nicodemus? Nicodemus. Great job. We find this book in the chapter three of John. So Nicodemus was a very important man in Jesus' time. He was known as a Pharisee. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the time. Pharisees knew a lot of the scriptures, what we now call the Old Testament. They went to the synagogue or church regularly. They were respected by all Jewish people. Now Nicodemus came to Jesus at night after it was very dark. That was because he didn't want anyone to see that he was talking to Jesus. He was afraid that the other religious leaders, the ones who hated Jesus, what they would think. So Nicodemus sneaked around carefully through the town and found Jesus. Nicodemus met with Jesus and asked him what it would take to to receive salvation. He had a very specific question. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was a good man, And he did good deeds, and he went to church more often than most people. But Jesus spoke to Nicodemus directly. He said, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. This was very confusing to Nicodemus. He was like, born again? What are you talking about? (coughs) So Nicodemus asked, how can an old man like me go back into the mother's womb and be born again? 
Nicodemus was thinking, does Jesus want me to crawl back into my mommy's tummy? That would be crazy. I'm an old man now. I can't do that. But Jesus explained that God can give new life. Even though we're born in a natural way from our moms, we can receive salvation from God, and we can be given a brand new spiritual life. All of our sins are forgiven, and we are born again. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Nicodemus learned that day what we're going to be learning about today. That God loved the world, all people, and he wants all people to receive Jesus as our Savior. And we are going to learn all about this today. And what you can do is you can start sharing this with the people around you. And then you can even start sharing it with the people across all nations that God wants our salvation You're too kind. Please hold the applause. I am the actor, and I'm here to teach you today's power verse. If you want to be a great method actor like me, you must know the power verse today. So let's get to it. Today's power verse says, The Lord is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3.9 what a stupendous power verse! But if there's one thing I have learned, it's that you'll never forget your lines or the power verse in this instance if you're completely in character. So to help us, let's select today's character from our character box. Ah, yes! Today's character is... a ham sandwich. <laughs> Acting, thank you. That's not what it is at all. Today's character is really an ant, which means you need to make your voice as small as you can. So today, stand with me and say the power verse on the count of three in character, like a little ant. One, two, three. The Lord is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. 2 Peter 3, 9. Acting, thank you. That was fantastic. I'll see you later, boys and girls, because my pet gerbil has a nail appointment today. She's going to get her nails shellacked. Ooh. That's awesome. I don't know what it means, but I bet it will cost me a lot of money. I'll see you later. Exit stage. I don't know which direction is the nail salon. We'll go with left. I think this is left. We thank you that you are with us, not only in this room, but in the homes of so many kids uh, all around the world. Lord, we, we thank you that you are with us. You are for us. You love us. And your presence is all around us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, are you ready for today's lesson? Oh, wow, you really are. You're all cheering and excited. All right, well, it's time for you to get in your LLP. That is your listen and learn position, which means you are sitting up straight wherever you are, sitting up nice, tall, straight. Let me see everyone with good, fancy people posture. Yeah, Sh like shoulders back and stuff, you know. All right, and your feet are on the floor, at least angling down towards the floor. No crisscross applesauce. That way you are sitting right up at the edge of your seat, listening closely. And your hands are empty. Let me see empty hands. Empty, 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 empty. Let me see them all. Some of you aren't showing me your empty hands yet. I want to see them. I want to see them. All right, and put them together. Put them in your lap. And leave them right there so that you aren't distracted. And your eyes should be wide open looking right up here at me. Your ears should be open listening to every single word I say. And your mouth, even though I can't see it because it's hidden by the mask, should be closed so that no one around you is distracted. All right. You ready? I have a really awesome question for you. Some of you might know this. I doubt it. Let's see. Do you know how many people are in the world? Does anyone know? A lot, yeah, but a specific, how many? Seven million? Okay. 
What do you think? Infinity and beyond? Okay, thank you, Buzz Lightyear. Um, just kidding. Thank you, Elliot. Uh, anyone else? 27? Wow, Mr. Raymond's probably off. I think there's like 27 in here. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else got any ideas? Seven point billion. I'm not sure if I know what that means, but that's a big number. Okay, you want to know the answer? I think maybe Nate might be closest. We'll see. You ready for it? Seven billion, six hundred and fifty-five million, nine hundred and fifty-seven thousand, and three hundred and sixty-nine people. Whoa, that's a lot of people. Wow, that is so many people. Have you ever seen 7 billion of anything? No, me neither. That's crazy. 7 billion people, almost 8 billion. It's like over halfway to 8 billion. That's crazy. That is a lot of people in the world. And you know what's even crazier? Every single one of those people, every one of them, even us, we all have a huge problem. In fact, we all share the same problem. Does anyone know what that problem might be? What do you think? Lying, okay. What do you think? Okay, who else? Any ideas what you think? We all have the same problem in the whole world. Every one of us share the same problem. What do you think? What is it? Sin. Yeah, sin. We all have the problem of sin in our life. Isn't that crazy? But you know what the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23? For everyone has sinned. All have fallen short of God's glorious standard. That means we don't measure up because we sin. We, we're not like perfect like God is, so we're not as good as him because we sin and we mess up all the time. And now I have to ask you, did that verse say... For most people have sinned, and pretty much all of the people have fallen short of God's glorious standard. Is that what it said? No. Did it say only a few people have sinned, and only just a couple of folks have messed up and fallen short of God's glorious standard? Is that what it said? No. Did it say everyone but Becca has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious, but Becca, she's pretty awesome? Is that what it said? No, all of us. Yeah, every single one of us. Every person in the whole wide world, good people, bad people, nice people, mean people, all the people have sinned and fallen short of perfection, God's standard of holiness, okay? Now, I have good news, though. You listen to that and you say, well, that's great. This is going to be a real fun lesson. I can't wait to find out how we're all sinners. No, there's good news. Are you ready for it? Even though we've all sinned, even though we've all messed up, God is patient with us. Everyone say, patient. That's right. God is patient with us. Even though we mess up, even though we sin, even though we do God wrong all the time, even though we turn our backs on him sometimes, even though we disobey him, even though we go against what he says all the time because we're humans and we mess up, he is patient with us. He still loves us. Now, you may have seen this already with some other people in the world, maybe even yourself, I don't know. But have you ever seen when there are two people and they're friends, or maybe they're dating or married even, and, and one of them turns their back on the other one, or goes against what the other one wants, or doesn't listen to the other one anymore, or decides they don't like the other person anymore? What does that person do? Are they patient, or do they just kind of like move on? Yeah, lots of people. They, they get hurt by someone else, and they move on. They say, uh -uh, I'm done with you. You don't listen to me. I'm out of here. You don't want to be my friend? Forget you. Bye. And they move on. But does God move on when we do those things to him? No. Even though we turn our backs on him sometimes, even though people do the wrong thing and sin, even though people don't listen to him after he's like telling them what to do, even though people ignore what he wants them to do, he doesn't move on. He's always there waiting. He is patient for you. God is waiting for everyone in the world. He wants everyone. 
to be in a relationship with him. And that brings us to our next lesson. God wants all to be saved. Who? All. All people. Everyone. God, he wants every person to be saved. Now check it out. Earlier I told you Romans 3.23 for everyone has sinned, all have fallen short of God's glorious standard. But you want to hear the next verse? Romans 3, 24. You ready? Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. You know what that means? God is patient. He's waiting on us because he wants every single person to know that Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect, sinless life. He's that one person of all existence, of all time, that didn't have the same problem we all have. He didn't have a sin problem. He was perfect because he's God. And he lived on earth, and even though he was perfect, even though he didn't owe the price that it cost to sin, which is death, that's what it says in the Bible, the cost, the wages of sin is death, even though he didn't owe it because he's perfect. And even though we all owe it, he decided to do something for us. He wanted to save us from paying that price. He wanted to save us from death. So God sent Jesus to live this perfect life, and then he was crucified or killed on a cross. And that was like the worst kind of death to go through back in the day. It was awful. Even still today, it's terrible. And you know what? Jesus did all of that and rose again and is preparing a place for you in heaven. When you die, you can go there and be there for eternity. You don't have to die forever, but instead you can live forever with Jesus. He did all of that because he really, really, really loves you. Now imagine those two people we were talking about. If one of those people did something really, really awful, and they completely rejected the other person. Could you imagine if this person, the good person, they decided to give their life for this other person? That's, that's crazy, isn't it? That probably would never happen. But you know what? That shows just how much God loves you and me. And not just you and me, but God loves all people all around the world. And God is patient and he's waiting for us to let everyone know how much he loves them before he returns one day. It's going to be super, super awesome because we get to do something. We get to share God's love with everyone. Now I'm going to tell you how we can let everyone know that God is patient. He's waiting on them. And he wants all to be saved because he sent his son Jesus. And he is waiting patiently to let everyone know. So you want to know how you can do it? You ready to know how you can help? Okay, are you sure? Okay, I was just checking. Some of the kids online were louder. I think I could probably hear them from their homes. Are you ready? Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, you ready? Here we go. We must pray. Everyone say pray. Give and go. That's right. We must pray, give, and go. Now let me break those down for you, all right? So you can pray. You can ask God to help missionaries. And, and people, pr pastors and preachers all around the world to, to share God's love with others. You can pray that people you know would be able to have a, a, an experience or a time with God where God shows them who he is and shows them how powerful he is and that they would turn their lives to him. And instead of walking away from God, instead of turning from him, instead of sinning and doing what's wrong, they would follow Jesus and love him for the rest of their lives. You can pray for your family. You can pray for your friends. You can pray for people all around this world that God would do amazing things in their lives and show them just how much he loves them. That may be that you pray that someone specifically goes to them. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's someone they know. Maybe it's someone in your school. Maybe it's someone around the world, and a missionary will go and see them and teach them about Jesus. You can pray that those people all around the world would find out about God's love. You can pray that God would help them and change their lives and show them exactly who he is and that he wants all to be saved. So that's how you pray. You can do that every day, all the time. Pray for people constantly because guess what? God's waiting on them. He's being patient for them. He wants them to be saved. He's desperate for them to know him. 
He loves them, every single person. Now, that's how you pray. Everyone say, give. Oh, yeah. How many got some money? Anybody got some money? Yeah, yeah. Some of you do, yeah. Wow, $150. Woo, Nate's rich. All right. Check it out, y'all. God allows us the opportunity to give to help other people. God wants us to take what we have, instead of holding it all for ourselves, instead of keeping it all to make ourselves happy and do cool things for us and buy cool stuff for us, we can do more than just that with our money. In fact, our money can go a long way. When we share our money to give to missions or give to BGMC every month or give in the offering and slam, guess what? That money goes to help boys and girls all around the world to find out about Jesus. It buys vehicles and Bibles and plane tickets and housing for missionaries and, and workers all around the world so that people can find out about how much God loves them. So you know what you can do? When you get birthday money, when you get money for Christmas, when you get an allowance, when you just get random money off the side of the road or in the couch cushions, guess what? You can save it up and you can bring it and you can give. And you can, you can help people all around the world find out how important it is that God is waiting and he's patient and he loves them and he wants them to be saved. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for them. Even the most mean, rotten people in this world, God loves them. And if you give, you can help be a part of the solution. You can help people find out about God. You can give so that missionaries have resources and they can share God's love everywhere. Now, you learn how to pray. We just talked about how to give. You ready? Everyone say, go. That's right. You can go. Check it out. You don't have to go to Africa right now. You don't have to go to Asia today or tomorrow. You don't really have to go to Europe this week. But guess what? Someday you might. But for now, you can start right here in your neighborhood, in your home even. You have family members that don't love Jesus. You can start at your school. You can start all around the city, everywhere you go, telling others about Jesus, going up to them and saying, hey, guess what? Jesus loves you, and he, he's being patient. He's waiting on you because he wants you to know that God sent his son to die for you, and you can go share the good news that I, we just talked about all around. And then someday, when you get older, God might even call you to be a missionary or a pastor or someone that preaches and shares God's news all around the world. God, he wants you to let everyone know that he wants all to be saved. He's patient. He's waiting on us. He loves us, every single one of us, even the worst of us, the ones that have turned our backs and sinned the most. God loves every single one of us, and he wants us all to be saved. I want everyone to close your eyes and bow your heads. No one looking around. And I want to pray for two kinds of people. First, I want to pray for some of you that maybe you say, wow, I have been sinning. I have fallen short of God's glorious standard. There's no way I'm perfect. I've been messing up. I've been lying. I've been cheating. I've been disobeying. I've been doing stuff I shouldn't be doing, listening to things I shouldn't be listening to. And I'm ready. I need to I need to ask forgiveness and let Jesus save me from the, the price of death. I need, to, I need to let that thing he did on the cross be for me too. I need, to, I need to decide right now that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I put him over every part of my life, and I want to follow him forever. If that's you, real quick, would you raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah. You ready to give your life to Jesus? Yeah. And I want to pray for one more group of people. If, if you say, I, I haven't been doing enough to share God's good news with everyone. I haven't done enough to let everyone know that God wants all to be saved. Maybe you, you've been skipping prayer and you haven't been really praying for any of your friends or your, your people around the world or any of that. Or maybe you've been holding all your money and your stuff and your time and all that good stuff and you haven't been sharing and letting others know through missions giving. Or maybe you haven't been sharing Jesus in, in your school or your family. You've got people all around you that you know that need to know about Jesus, and you just kind of haven't been doing it. Maybe you're ready today 
to make a change. You're ready to do everything you can to let all know that God wants them to be saved. If that's you, would you raise your hand real quick? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pray for both of those groups right now. Keep your eyes closed, heads bowed. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for those that raise their hand saying that they are ready to be saved from the, the, the price of sin, the cost of death. Lord, I pray that you would forgive them. Pray that they would, they would ask for forgiveness, Lord, and that would, they would decide right now to seek you and to put you first in their lives, that you would be more important than everything else that they have in their lives. That they, would, they would be thankful every day for what you did on the cross for them. You would remind them that you're patient for the, with them and that you paid the ultimate price so that they could be free and they could be saved. Lord, I pray that you would help remind them every day to live for you and to follow you. And I pray for all of these boys and girls, especially those that raise their hands saying they're ready to do more. Lord, I pray that you would help them to pray more and ask for, for you uh, to bless people and to show up in people's lives and to send people so that everyone can know that you gave your life for them, and that you are, love them and you're patient and you're waiting for them to be saved. Lord, I pray that those with, with money and resources and time would give all that they can to share the news of, of your son Jesus coming to earth. And Lord, I pray that you would even uh, not only allow these kids really great opportunities in their school and in their family and their neighborhood to share about you, but Lord, I pray that even today you would call some of these boys and girls to be missionaries and pastors, and, and I pray that you would, you would call them to do great things in their lives, Lord, for the rest of their lives, that they would chase after you and, and what you want for them. And Lord, I pray that you would help them to live out a life of letting everyone they can know that, God, you want all to be saved. I pray that you would help us to be more like you, to follow you, and to give our lives to let everyone know you. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job, boys and girls. You have been listening super closely. Now, we just prayed about it, but I want to remind you, you can make a difference in this world. Starting right here, right where you live, and you can make a difference all around the world. Your prayer, your giving, and going. Just telling people about Jesus every chance you get. When you do those things, you can make a huge difference in letting all know, everyone, that God wants all to be saved. Can you do it? You ready? You sure? You don't sound very enthusiastic about it. Are you ready to go into the world and let everyone know? Yeah, awesome. 